Now, this is some, you know, some work, but it's not hard. Really, this stuff's not hard. <clears throat> All right. It says, given the following ordered pairs, and I would underline this stuff, 1 comma 3 is where t is 0. Do you remember how that is the initial point where the vector starts? Remember that? Let's just write our vector equation because we're going to use it to answer our questions. How many have already done some of the homework? Like the first six or so? Worked on it? See, you were supposed to. I gave you 20 minutes the other day to work on it. Now, those people will know what I'm talking about if you've been working on the homework. What's the pair that goes here, Matt? I, I know you can. Beg your pardon? Yeah. That's right. I knew you could tell me. 1 comma 3 because that's the ordered pair where t is 0. I just pointed it out to you. Then remember it's plus t times the direction vector. You've been finding the direction vector for a whole week now. How have we been finding the direction vector? Subtracting backwards, right? So this is the initial point, and it's going through 3, 1. So we need to subtract backwards. So 3 minus 1 for the x's. 1 minus 3. 1 negative 2, right? Now we're going to answer these questions. A says find the velocity. Let's do that first. Now, does anybody remember the first day we went over this? I told you your vector equation tells you the velocity. What is the velocity? Yes, ma'am. Right there it is. That's all there is to it. There's your velocity. Remember, I kept going, like, I go right to, down to, right to, down to, right to, down to. I was making that 90 and just using that slope. That's the velocity. Now, to find the, yes. Direction vector. Right, it's a direction vector also. So the velocity is always going to be the same direction. That's right, it is the direction vector, yes. Now you use that to find the speed. The speed is just the square root of 2 squared plus negative 2 squared. Remember that? Your magnitude is the same as speed. You've been finding that for about a week now, too, haven't you? Remember, you had to use this also in your last quiz at the bottom of that formula for finding an angle. So you've been doing all this stuff. It's just now you're finding out what it all applies to. So once I finish that, you should get the square root of 8, right? Thank you. And it simplifies to 2 root 2. So that's my speed. So those are the two answers for part A. So you can find these things in the most important equation is the vector equation. Now let's look and see what B says. B says to find the parametric equations. Aren't those easy to find once you know the vector? Sure they are. Who's, done, who's already done it in your homework, you can tell me. How do I do the parametric equations? Don't I need a y equals and an x equals? How do I do the x equals? You start with the x equals, right there. And you just go to the x in each part. 1, yeah, plus 2t. See, that's not hard. That's the first part. Now you got to do the y. The second part of your parametric is y equals. Yep, y equals 3 plus negative 2 times t, which would be minus 2t, wouldn't it? Now, those are the things you, you do first. The next part is not difficult. Now that it says graph using the t values. Here are the t values that are given to you. What does t stand for? Time. These are seconds. 
This is when it crosses a certain point. The ordered pair is where. It's like a when and where situation. Well, what we want to do is find, we want to graph these points. Well, isn't this going to give us an x and y here? And don't they both in terms of t? So let's find it for, yeah, we just plug them in. Is that what you're going to say? Yeah. Yes. That's exactly right. So let's do, we have to do all these, but I, there's a shortcut to this. You don't have to do them all. Let's just do the number one for t. Yes. Well, if you can draw your own x, y axis, so I'll have a graph on your test. But on your homework, if you want to use graph paper, you can, or you can draw your own x, y axis as long as you're not sloppy with your markings. All right. If we put one in here, where t equals one, let's get an ordered pair. If I put one in for t, in for the x, wouldn't that be one plus three, or two, which is three? Two times one is two. If I put one in here for the y, for the t to find the y, excuse me, wouldn't I have one? Isn't three minus two times one going to be one? I'm putting t is equal to one here, in here and here to get an x and y. Just work it out. So, when we graph that point, you have to graph it. Write 3 up 1. And then you write, this is where t equals 1. No. Do as I do, if you want to do it correctly. t equals 1. Now, I taught you something when we first went through this. Well, first of all, we've got another one here. T is zero where? You need to graph that. One, write one up three. That's where T is zero. Now see, remember these are direction vectors, so that tells me it's going to go in the positive direction. Zero is where it starts, so it's going to go this way. This is the positive direction. It's right here in the problem. No. No, but I'm just stay, trying to state what I think is obvious. Can't you tell that you're going to go from 0 to 1 when you count? 0, 1, 2, 3, right? So if we go in the opposite direction, it's going to be... No. If we're going positive this way, then we'd be going negative. So T negative 1 is going to be... Are you following me now? Okay. But we don't have to plug all these in. If you just listen for a second... We did this the other day. What did we say the velocity and the direction vector? Oh, direction vector. Same as slope, wasn't it? Yeah. We'll just take a look at this. Isn't this right two down two? Between those two points we already graphed? And all of them have to have the same direction vector. So if I want to get t equals two, I can start here and go right two down two, and that's where t equals two. Are you following me? Right two, down two, the direction vector. Since it's one here, then this is going to be t equals two here. So guess what's going to be next? Right two, down two, what are we going to have here? T equals three. See, we don't have to put those values. If you put those values in, guess what you're going to get? Same point, x comma y. So this is where t equals three. Now if we want to go in the opposite direction, we got to do all three of those, or all those points up there. We need to do negative one, negative two, negative three. Yeah. Wouldn't we go up to left two? Right? To stay in the same line here. And this would be t equals negative one. And then if I want t equals negative two, up to left two. And I got one more. So this is the where and when of this vector. Each of these points would be the where. T is the number, the seconds when it's going in motion. Yes, sir. Well, that's considered just when you go in the opposite direction. It's just for direction purposes. Does that make sense? 
It's not an actual negative seconds. It's, again, it has to do with the direction vector. A vector po is the direct direction it's going in to begin with is the positive. And see, a lot of people get confused just because they think this should be negative because it's going down. That's not the point. The point is that the initial direction of the vector was this way. So if you want to go in the negative direction of that, you'd go the opposite. Okay, you're going to have one like this where you have to do A, B, and C on your quiz tomorrow. Let's go to the next one. Example three. Didn't think it was very hard. Now you're going to like this one because it has a lot of algebra 2 in it. No, solving, it <laughs> solving simultaneous equations. Now this picture is merely a graphing representative of what you're going to do algebraically because I want you to see how it proves what we do is true. You won't have this on your paper. You won't have the graphs. All you're going to have is the equations and have to do the algebra. Okay? Now, it says an object moves along a line in such a way that it <coughs> its x and y coordinates at time t are my x equals 1 minus, or yeah, 1 minus t. And isn't that a parametric? Isn't that what we just talked about? Right? That's a parametric equation. And we also have y equals 1 plus 2t. Well, that is this line right here. Now remember how you can write it in three forms? Vector, parametric, Cartesian. Cartesian is like in algebra, like ax plus by equals c. Remember that? So I could write the equation of this line using this if I wanted to, but that's why it's a line. Every vector goes in a straight line like this. Now we want to know when and where does it, the object cross the circle well, I've given you the visual where it does it. You're not going to have that to look at. So we're going to do it algebraically. Well, if two systems intersect, to find out where they do, you solve simultaneous equations. Don't we have what x equals here? Couldn't we plug it in for x in the circle to see where, see we're going to see where they intersect? So here's what you do. I had to turn around because of the mic. So if x equals 1 minus t, we're going to put that in for x. So your x is squared, isn't it? Right? I'm just substituting. Does everybody see what I'm doing? Plus y minus 1. What's y equal? So we're going to put that in place of y. 1 plus 2t. But we still have the minus 1 on the end, don't we? Squared equals 25. Now all I did was substitute what x and y equals into the circle's equation. Now I have, all I have now is t's, right? Which means I'm going to find the t's. Now how many times does it intersect that circle? So I should have two t's. Would, and wouldn't I have if I have a square? Remember, a square tells you you have two answers. Did you know that? Anybody in algebra teach you that? If you have x cubed, you're going to have three answers. Okay. Now, here's the question. How many know how to square that binomial from algebra 2? You can FOIL. Separate it. 1 minus t times 1 minus t. How many know how to do square the first twice product, square the last? Anybody remember that shortcut? Yeah. I'm going to do it that way. Square the first isn't one squared one. Twice the product means one times negative t is negative t. Double it. Minus 2t. If you don't do it that way, don't worry. You can FOIL. You know how to FOIL, right? I don't want to take the time to do that because you're supposed to know that already. You know how to FOIL. So if you don't understand what I'm doing here, you can FOIL later and see if you get the same thing. Then you square the last. But if you've separated that into two parentheses and FOIL it, you should get this. Did you do it already? And you got it? Okay. 
Now this one's easy if you do what first? What are the, what's going to happen to the ones here? Aren't the ones gone? So all you really got is 2t squared, which is 4t squared, right? 2 squared is 4, and then you got t squared. And what's this equal? Well, this is a quadratic, so we got to get it equal to 0 and solve it by factoring. So we're going to move our 25 over. And can't we, uh, first of all, combine the t squareds and have 5t squared? Yes? There's only negative 2t is the only t term we have, minus 2t. Now let's do this so I don't have to write a bunch of steps. You know that this has to be equal to 0 to solve it. When I move the 25 over, what happens to it? It becomes negative. And don't we already have a positive 1 here? So negative 25 and 1. Now we have it in standard form so we can factor it. So what we did is we substitute one equation in the other, and now we're simplifying it, getting equal to 0. This is why you can't ever forget any math you've ever learned, because you're going to use it again. And guess what? When you go to college, you're going to see this again. That's why you should never have the attitude after you take a test, I'm done. I don't need this stuff anymore. You might be able to do that in other subjects, but you can't do that in math. All right. Now to factor trinomial, wouldn't the 5t squared separate into 5t and t? Yes? Now I'm going to do this quickly for you, save time, but you'd have to try and <coughs> factors of 24 that will work here that will give us this. No? You can't go by that. No? You can't go by that. You can't go by the 6 and 4 to get you this because there's a 5 out here that's times them. See, your inside term here comes from this times this plus this times this. The only time you can do that is when there's nothing in front of the t squared. So the factors that are going to work are going to be 12 and 2. How many see that now? See a few hands. Here, what's 12 times t? 12t. What's 2 times 5t? Can I get a 2t out of that? Can I get it? Yeah. <laughs> but it's got to be what kind of 2? So the large one has to be negative. So that means that's negative and that's plus. If you had me for Algebra 1, you would have learned this very well because that's all I did is drill them. They still remember how to do it. All right. Now, how do we finish solving this equation, though? Set them both equal to 0. I'm testing your intellectual endurance. Well, it will have to be for college. Seriously. That's why this is called college prep. That's why this class is called college prep. Prep means prepare. Now, when you do this, I'm going to do it quickly. You can solve it, but you're going to get 2.4 for t when you do that one. You don't have to this time because it comes out to a nice decimal that you, it doesn't, it's not a, a repeating decimal. Follow me? It's a repeating decimals we don't want written. Round it off. Now, this one's easy. t equals negative 2, doesn't it? Well, what's t stand for? So that means those two points, one of them is 2.4 and one of them is negative 2 time-wise, seconds. So we found the, there are two things here we got to find. We found the when. Isn't time mean when? So the time is 2.4 and negative 2 seconds. Now let's bring this over here so we have it organized. We want the uh, where and when. So the where, <coughs> excuse me, let's do the when 2.4. When t is 2.4, now we need to find the where that happens. You just did it on the last example. What did we use in the last example when we knew the t to find, no, we don't do the dot product. No. Matt? 
Thank you. Put it into the parametric. That's what we did in the last example. No, I said last example. Sorry. But isn't a where like an x comma y? Isn't a coordinate point telling you where? Okay. Well, if you know a t, you put it in there and find your where. So plug in 2.4 in here for t, and your where will be negative 1.4. And you plug it in there, right? 1 minus 2.4. Put 2.4 in here, and you get 5.8. 2 times 2.4 is 4.8 plus 1. Now I want you to show you something. That my graph proves out here. If I graph this point, wouldn't I go left 1.4, which is left 1 and a little less than half, and up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5.8. So that works. And this is where t equals 2.4. Right here, we solved this. Point 0.40 is the same as 2.4. All right. <laughs> if we have t is negative 2, now, where should that land? Where, where should the where be? No, yeah, it should be right here, shouldn't it, if, if we're right. So plug it in. Put negative 2 in here. What's negative 1 minus a negative 2? Positive 3. If I put a negative 2 in here, 1 minus 4 would be, wouldn't I have 1 plus a negative 4? Which is? And that's exactly where we are. Right 3, down 3. This is where t would equal negative 2. Now, you're not going to do any of the graph part. I wanted to show you the picture of what you were finding algebraically. So this was something in motion going across the circle. We want to know where and when it's going to hit the circle. What is this thing called on YouTube? It's going to be called... <coughs> it's going to be up in about five minutes. But yeah, it's going to be per, it's going to be uh, eight point six because that's the section of the book I'm using, and it'll say part two because I did part one last time. Anyway, this I'm done, and this is one like one of your problems on your homework, which will be like one of your problems on your quiz. This is the answer. This is the where and when for that. Where is that point? When is it two point four? This is the where and when for this. No. These are one answer. Where and when. When I say this is really the where and when, there's two answers for, and there's two answers. <laughs> All right, in a sense, you're right. There are four then. Okay, we're done.